Well, it's Thursday morning, um, beautiful day here in the um, Northeast Tacoma area. And it's been a while since I've had a morning coffee talk with you. Once again, that's really good in the morning. Um, I woke up this morning with a thought, sat down with the computer and threw together something really, really quick. I'd like to share it with you if that's all right. So um, I'm going to just um, put up what I've got on my mind, talk about it, and leave it with you to um, digest. And the question is, what came first, the chicken or the Lord? And that's kind of a play on an old phrase, what came first, the chicken or the egg. But my thoughts this morning um, have to do with a certain spirit, a certain attitude, a certain goodness about a chicken that Jesus also showed in his ministry. And who had it first? The chicken or the Lord? So here we go. I remember many years ago um, when I lived in Indonesia, um, the pastor, um, Brother Andreas, an Indonesian man, um, taught a wonderful Bible lesson on how the, the chickens in the road. And if you spend any time in Indonesia, particularly rural Indonesia, you'll know that there's more motorcycles and chickens on the road than anything else. But um, he said the interesting thing about the chickens, he said they're out there wandering up and down the village streets all day long, mingling with each other. But at night, as the sun begins to go down, the chicken knows what home to go to. He said the chickens return each to their own home, and he used that as a comparison of um, the congregation that he was ministering to, and he said that um, sometimes there's chickens that are smarter than church members, and that church people don't seem to know where their spiritual home is. They don't, they don't know how to get home. And there's some truth to that. But um, he noticed um, over years of observation on the islands there that um, chickens had a certain amount of wisdom. And we find in Job chapter 12 this very interesting um, observation also. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee. And the fowls of the air, and that I think might even include a chicken, they're, they're a fowl, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Job saw the hand of the Lord in the wisdom of animals, in the attributes and the things of the animals that um, we would probably just attribute to nature, in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. What can we learn from a chicken? Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together? Jesus had a spirit about him. Jesus had an attitude about him of gathering people together like a chicken. The chicken seems to have the same attitude as Jesus, or is it that Jesus has the same attitude as a hen? He says, even as a hen, what came first? the chicken or the Lord, I would have to say the Lord. The Lord is eternal from all of eternity. And at one point in time, God created the animals. 
and he put into the hen an attribute, a spirit, a desire, even a willingness to take the time and to try and to work to gather together her chickens under her wings. That is a godly attribute. And it's something that we, if we want to be like Christ, we need to be like chickens. I remember as a kid thinking that an ostrich was a big chicken. They look alike, looks like a chicken, um, walks like a chicken, acts like a chicken, lays eggs like a chicken, but it's not a chicken. I was deceived. I thought that everything that looked like a chicken was a chicken. And everything that looks like a Christian, maybe it isn't a Christian. You can't tell always until you see attributes that are godly. And the attribute I'm looking for in Christians is, are you gathering people together in the name of Jesus Christ? Are you actively seeking to bring people to the Lord? You gave goodly wings to the peacocks, wings and feathers to the ostrich. She leaves her eggs in the earth. She warms them in the dust and forgets that the foot may crush them or that the wild beast may break them. Look at the spirit, the attitude, the attribute of an ostrich. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain without fear because God has deprived her of wisdom. God has given to the chicken wisdom, but to the ostrich, silly bird. Well, I think that's about all I have for us today. Um, I hope that this short little coffee talk will give you something to think about. I'm speaking to Christians here. Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your effort? People are concerned about the time, the age that we're living in. Things are weird right now. Are you seeking to gather together stuff? Are you worried about having enough supplies? Or have you started to wonder where are your little chickens? Are you talking to your friends and your family? Are you concerned about their well-being? If this is indeed a biblical time that we're going into, are you worried about their souls? It's my morning thought.